If you've ever looked at an aircraft, you might have noticed a variety of designs on the end of aircraft wings. If we were to describe these designs to a child, we could say that some wingtips are tall and thin while others are more short and stubby. Others have extensions coming from both the top and bottom. When it comes to one particular design, there are protrusions called winglets on Boeing aircraft, but these similar-looking devices go by the name of sharklets on Airbus aircraft. Ultimately, however, both provide a significant role in reducing drag. But how do they work, and what exactly is the difference? Let's explore this topic in today's video. First, let's look at the problem generally experienced at the tip of wings. From canted to blended to split scimitar, there are numerous types of winglets across the industry. Regardless, these various designs all have a common goal. Before we dive into the difference between winglets and sharklets, we need to understand why either exists. When an aircraft flies, its wing creates a difference in air pressure. The air pressure above the wing is lower than the air under the wing, generating lift and the whole system of flight. However, as the wing trails off into a tip, the two pressure zones meet, and the confluence creates a series of spiraling vortices. The larger the vortices, the more drag is created, slowing the aircraft down. As the plane slows down, the engines need to burn more fuel to maintain speed, costing the airline more money to operate. Thus, airlines and aircraft manufacturers are motivated to modify wingtips in such a way as to reduce the size of generated vortices. Blending a curve into the wingtip has shown to impact the size of the vortex significantly, narrowing the air turbulence diameter and therefore drag. So, we know that older aircraft lacked any wingtip devices, but when did all of this change? Back in 1973, the Middle Eastern oil crisis hit the aviation industry. Aircraft fuel became a premium commodity, and airlines suddenly found themselves measuring every drop. They accurately predicted that fuel would become more expensive, and as a result, realized that they needed to operate more fuel-efficient aircraft. In partnership with the US National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, Aircraft manufacturers like Boeing started to experiment with ways to reduce drag and make fuel last longer. They noticed that when it came to nature, birds of prey had feathered wingtips that curved up and back at the end of their wings. This generated more lift and reduced drag. As the space agency notes, for many years, wing designers have attempted to reduce the induced drag component by special shaping of the wing tips. The Wright brothers used curved trailing edges on their rectangular wings based on wind tunnel results. On modern airliners, the wingtips are often bent up to form winglets. Winglets were wind tunnel tested and computer analyzed by Richard Whitcomb of the NASA Langley Research Center in the mid-1970s. The organization goes on saying, Flight tests at the NASA Dryden Flight Research Center have found a 6.5% reduction in the fuel use of a Boeing 707-type airliner when using winglets. Winglets must be carefully integrated into the total wing design, which explains why many different winglet designs appear on various airliners. In 1988, Boeing was the first to offer winglets with its Boeing 747-400, the design of this particular winglet is known as an angled winglet. However, it wasn't until Gulfstream implemented a quote-unquote blended winglet design that the technology really took off, pun intended. Boeing would partner with blended winglet creators Aviation Partners and implement the new design in its 737, 757 and 767 programs. The American plane maker would then offer this feature retroactively to existing customers as well. So, this is the story behind Boeing and its winglets, but what about Airbus? In 2002, the European Union started a program called the Aircraft Wing with Advanced Technology Operation, or AWIATA. This program would look at ways to reduce drag and the fuel burn of aircraft, as well as examining noise and aircraft wakes. Airbus had been experimenting with winglets since 2000, although by 2006 the firm had yet to be convinced on the technology. In 2006, Airbus was noted as stating, 
The latest information on the A320 winglet testing is that the results indicate that although improvements were found in terms of cruise drag, the increase in structural weight that would be necessary to support the winglets largely offsets the gain. In 2011, Airbus finally began to offer its version of winglets. More specifically, on November 30, 2011, Airbus's test A320 MSN0001 took to the skies with its new wingtips, conducting a five-hour flight from Toulouse. These days, from the Airbus A319 to the A321XLR, these tall and thin wingtips that bend upwards come as standard for the Airbus narrowbody airframe. These devices, however, were known as sharklets. Can we transform our aircraft? Sharklets. <laughs> Chocolate retrofit. Why is this? Well, aviation partners would sue Airbus and claim that they used experiments with the original blended winglet design to come up with its own model. In the end, Airbus would lose the lawsuit and paid out an undisclosed sum to aviation partners. As McLean's points out, the naming of the wingtip devices as Sharklets is essentially part of an effort to escape a patent held by Boeing. You may have noticed that while all modern narrow bodies have winglets, from the A220 to the C919, this isn't true for all wide bodies. The most notable are the Boeing 777 and 787s, which have both foregone the traditional winglets. For the 777, it was a question of fitting into the ICAO Code E size requirements, ensuring it could service most global airports. This remains the reason why the upcoming 777X features its distinct folding wingtips and not a unique design like the 737 MAX or even the 787. While the Dreamliner doesn't have conventional wingtips, it actually uses a design known as the raked edge. Raked wingtips have a greater sweep angle than the rest of the wing, as you can see in the sharp bend at the edge. This design doesn't add the weight of modified wingtips. NASA estimates these save an impressive 5.5% drag on the 787 due to its overall efficiency, compared to the 3.5 to 4.5% from other wingtips on aircraft. Airbus has opted to continue using a version of its sharklets on its wide bodies, namely the A350 and A330 NEO families. This blended wing design is less sharp than the sharklets, but also allows for more wing flex, which optimizes efficiency during key parts of the flight. However, we'll focus on the sharklets and winglets in this video. So, the big question of the day, what is the actual difference between Boeing winglets and Airbus sharklets? Well, long story short, there is no real difference between the two types of winglets, apart from name and slight aesthetics. They are so close in design that Airbus was proven to be infringing on a patent, so no version is better than another. However, winglets and sharklets are both solutions to inefficient wing design from earlier aircraft. A well-designed wing resolves the pressure difference as the wing ends, and thus doesn't need anything on the end of the wings. With up to 33% fuel savings to be had, such innovations will go a long way, especially in today's sensitive climate. What do you think? What do you make of the two companies' offerings? And do you have a favourite wingtip design? Let us know what you think in the comments section. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.